Now, since we're dealing with also the rest of the bones, so yes. the maxilla, the mandible, if there's something that is affecting those bones, it can be related to either growth, it can even be related to an accident. Mm -hmm. You're driving up your car, you get an accident. You're mm -hmm. walking somewhere and you fall down playing a sport mm -hmm. or even interpersonal violence, what happens? You can break some bones, right? Mm -hmm. Once you break those bones, who deals with them? It's the oral and maxillofacial surgeon, basically to put them back in. So it's almost like uh, how you have a fracture of your hand and you go to a bone doctor. Yeah. So the bone doctor of the face is, is the maxillofacial. maxillofacial. Dr. Kendi here again and welcome back to my oral health diaries this week we have a special guest joining us we had told you that we are going into a very exciting series and here it is we are now in the month of April and we are going to be focusing a lot on oral cancer awareness and screening so I am going to introduce my special guest today I am super excited because this doctor is one of the kind hearted doctors out here really wonderful guy he has also taught me <laughs> so there's a lot to learn from him so let me not take much of our time and let me welcome my colleague <laughs> and friend dr kamau so he's going to introduce himself and tell us what he does and then we can get into today's conversation welcome dr kamau thank you so much dr kendi okay. so as we've said my name is dr martin kamau mm -hmm. i'm a specialist in oral and maxillofacial surgery i know yes. it's a mouthful yes but basically it's a surgical specialty that deals with conditions mm -hmm. of the face yes and the neck region mm -hmm. in a nutshell okay yes. so oral and maxillofacial surgery are you guys doctors or are you guys dentists Oh yes, now that is a, it has always been a play. It's very interesting. Yes. In Kenya, we are actually a dental specialty. Yes. And for you to actually become an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, mm. whichever way you begin, mm -hmm. you must have some dental background. Yes. Now, what I mean by that is that even medical doctors can mm. become maxillofacial surgeons oh. in, certain, in certain areas of the world. And what they do is that when they finish medicine, mm -hmm. they have to go back and do a course of dentistry. Mm -hmm. a few years mm -hmm. for them to get the basics of dentistry because when you're dealing with maxillofacial surgery you'll be dealing with the tooth bone areas and the jaws mm -hmm. that lead those. so you, when you're handling those you need to know the mechanics and the intricacies of the teeth okay so you so in some areas it's actually a combined specialty you mm -hmm. have to do both medicine mm -hmm. and dentistry mm -hmm. and then maxillofacial surgery but here in kenya we usually do dentistry and then go straight into maxillofacial surgery. Then we learn our medicine <laughs> as we do maxillofacial surgery. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just say you're like a hybrid. Hy you're hybrid. Exactly. You're like dentists and medics at the same time. Exactly. That's really cool. So most of our viewers don't even know what oral maxillofacial surgeons do. Yeah. What do you specialize in? Like what type of patients do you see? What type of cases do you deal with? Okay. That's a very... That's a very good question because it's not only patients, it's also other, just your colleagues, even the medics may not mm -hmm. exactly know what it is. Mm -hmm. So in essence, whenever you're dealing you, from its origin, because it started with more of a dental background originally, then yes. incorporated aspects of medicine. Whatever you think you would go to see a dentist for, mm -hmm. a maxillofacial surgeon can do. Mm -hmm. But now the practice has expanded. So what happens is that whatever conditions you have, this can be both medical conditions, some, and mostly surgical conditions of the facial region mm -hmm. and the neck, mm -hmm. including the oral cavity, the mouth, where you have the tooth bone areas. Mm -hmm. Those are that area, or whatever conditions are in that area, the maxillofacial surgeon can do. So usually there's a bit of confusion because the other specialties like ENT, which mm -hmm. are in the same space, yes. so what happens is that there is a lot of overlap. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that the ENT surgeons can do that the maxillofacial surgeons can do. So there's overlap in some of these specialties, which, which runs across the board. Mm -hmm. Same thing for plastic surgery. Yes. So if you're doing maxillofacial surgery, maxillofacial surgery, you can still do facial plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. It's just that you don't extend to the rest of the body. You keep it head and neck. So you see, there's that overlap. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's basically a super specialty that deals with the face and the neck region. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. In and including the mouth. <laughs> yes, yes, we have to include the mouth. So guys, head and neck issues. You remember when we started my oral health diaries, we mentioned that your dentist is your oral health care provider, not only in your mouth, head and neck region. Basically, that's what we tend to focus on. So Dr. Kamau, you've been practicing maxillofacial surgery in Kenya. How accessible would you say are services to the public? Like how possible is it to get a maxillofacial surgeon? Is All it right. easy? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's becoming easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, maxillofacial surgery, uh, initially back in maybe the 80s and 90s, it was never taught in, in Kenya. By this I mean there was no postgraduate course for it. So mm-hmm. the maxillofacial surgeons were few mm-hmm. and far between. However, from around the year 2000, 2001, they started the course here. So there has been a lot of uptake among the local professionals, mainly the dentists, mm-hmm. who have been, and we've been churning out quite a few uh, maxillofacial surgeons. So over the past maybe 20 years, from 2001, mm-hmm. we have been able to increase the numbers. So that means the accessibility to maxillofacial surgery has improved. Mm-hmm. So in essence, where you would find them, a lot of them are posted to public hospitals. Mm-hmm. Now we call them the county public referral hospitals. So a lot of them will be there. You'll also find them a lot of them in the teaching hospitals, right, whichever they are. Mm-hmm. So the thing about uh, accessibility is always for you to know what is happening and to ask. Some mm-hmm. people might go to a hospital. They might be a maxillofacial surgeon, but they might not see or know, ask. Yeah. They don't know. Yeah. So maybe there's also that aspect of awareness in terms of trying to market mm. the availability of the services mm, in general in kenya today though i've said we've improved our numbers we do have between they're still less than 50. less than 50. yeah so you can imagine they are basically a handful they're not too many and they're mostly in the urban areas and mostly yes they'll be concentrated in mostly the urban areas uh-huh. There are others who have actually ventured into more rural areas so there's still accessibility okay. for them okay. so that if you look at the numbers, still remains a challenge, but mm-hmm. thankfully we're still growing the profession as we move on. So mm-hmm. that is the, the good thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think what we would like to um, explain to our viewers in simple terms is why you actually need a maxillofacial, or when would you say you would like to seek the services of a maxillofacial surgeon? Like, what are the most common cases you encounter in the Kenyan population that you would tell a patient if you have this, the best person to go to is a maxillofacial surgeon because you would get better quality of care? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. And the way I would try to approach it is um, let's talk about specialty. Yes. The, Kenyan healthcare system has really improved eh? yeah. so much so that now the health seeking behavior is that you're going to go to a person who you believe has got the skills, necessary skills. Mm. Before they never used to do that because mm-hmm. they were the lack of the skills, so you probably go to a general surgeon. Mm. So now with maxillofacial surgery, anything that deals with the face and the neck region, you can go. So which ones are we talking yeah, about? Which ones are so let's start with oral. So it's oral. Mm and maxillofacial surgery. Yes. So think about dental a little bit. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about oral. Mm-hmm. So you have got conditions of the mouth. So we start with the mouth, you can start with the lips. Mm-hmm. The swelling of the lip, mm-hmm. whether it's medical or surgical, yeah. you can go to the oral maxillofacial surgeons. Mm-hmm. Or initially you can go to the dentist who refers you. Yes. It can be due to a growth, it can be due to maybe an allergic reaction, ETC. Mm-hmm. Those you can be seen. Mm-hmm. Then as you go into the oral cavity, you're dealing with the teeth. You're dealing with the tongue, mm. you're dealing with the soft tissues inside. So any conditions that you might find there mm. affecting the teeth, for example, teeth that are stuck, yeah. you call them impacted teeth. Yes. You go to an oral maxillofacial surgeon to do what? To remove them if they're causing problems. Mm. If you have any swellings, tumors, and mm. maybe swellings, I can talk about them in terms of maybe benign. Yes. Uh, swelling, so there mm-hmm. can be maybe a benign tumor, can be a cyst, these fluid filled cavities. Whenever you have a swelling, the yes, first swelling go, in your oral, in your oral cavity. cavity, go to a maxillofacial yes. surgeon. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So that has been an even cancerous conditions mm-hmm. of the oral cavity, the tongue, the cheek, the lips, anywhere, mm-hmm. you'll go and seek help from a maxillofacial surgeon. Mm-hmm. There are conditions that affect the bones that hold the teeth. Yes. So, for example, you can get problems of the joint because mm. of the temporomandibular joint. You go to a surgeon. So, problems of the joint for our viewers here is like 
you cannot open, open. your mouth. <laughs> yeah, like your leg is closing your mouth. Exactly. Which which other problem of the joint maybe would they okay. look out for? Sometimes there are these non-surgical conditions, a lot of them are pain related. Mm, right? Yes. So an interesting aspect of the head and neck is that you get a lot of these psychosomatic issues. If you have got psychological issues, tension, mm. see a lot of it manifests in the face. Yeah. It manifests as pain. Mm. You know, you usually clench a lot, so you might mm. find a lot of issues coming from the, the, joint. the joint. So you'll yeah. probably go to a maxillofacial surgeon. Mm. Now, since we're dealing with also the rest of the bones, so yes. the maxilla, the mandible, if there's something that is affecting those bones, it can be related to either growth, it can even be related to an accident. Mm. You're driving up your car, you get an accident. You're mm. walking somewhere and you fall down playing a sport mm. or even interpersonal violence. What happens? You can break some bones, right? Mm. Once you break those bones, who deals with them? It's the oral and maxillofacial surgeon, basically to put them back in. So it's almost like uh, how you have a fracture of your hand and you go to a bone doctor. Yeah. So the bone doctor of the face is, is the maxillofacial surgeon. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's the way I put it. Yeah. And so we deal with most of the bones, even the bones around the eye. Mm. So we don't deal with the eye itself, mm -hmm. which is dealt with by an eye doctor, an ophthalmologist. Yes. But the bones that are around the eye, we'll also deal with them in terms of if they're disjointed for whatever reason, we put them back together. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Uh, we talked about joint problems mm -hmm. and pain. Mm -hmm. There are pain issues that can manifest without affecting the joint, but they can manifest by affecting one side of the face. Yes. The cheek, mm -hmm. the tongue, the teeth. In mm -hmm. fact, some people will be like, I just have so much pain. They go to a dentist. They keep on having teeth extracted in one side or mm. another. And it's not related to the teeth, it's related to maybe a nerve problem, we call those neuralgias, so mm. doctors deal with those. Uh, infections. Mm -hmm. There's some infections that manifest from a tooth. You can get an abscess yeah. that overwhelms your uh, system. And what do you do? You have to go to a specialist to have yes. it managed. Otherwise, it can spread to other areas of the face, mm. the neck, and mm. even into the chest. Mm. So you see that broad spectrum. Mm. Another one is, um, interestingly, mm. you see those are conditions that have been brought up by a situation. Yes. But they're those conditions that we call, that you're probably born with. So we call those maybe congenital anomalies. The best mm. one I can tell you mm. that will affect probably the face and the one that you probably see the most. Yes. It's cleft, yes. cleft lip, cleft palate. Mm. Again, that's a constructive or a reconstructive procedure. Yeah. Maxillofacial surgeons. Mm. If you need to do a little touch up, look at the, you know some people. Yeah. You know, in God's <laughs> a in, touch up. yeah, a little touch up in God's sight. Anyway, I think everything is perfect. But yes. some people say, oh my nose is a little crooked, mm. a little bit me, a bit me. wrinkles. Yeah. It is so a bit of cosmetic surgery also falls in for the face. So, so botox and the stuff. Botox. Yeah. So okay. that's maxillofacial. Yeah? <laughs> a lot of my maxillofacial surgeons so actually do with the Botox. Yeah. But again, you see that falls in the purview also of dermatology, mm. cosmetics, yes. even plastics. So there's a lot of overlap. Overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But they are still the maxillofacial surgeon is still competent to do it. Yes. Yes. There's quite a bit that the maxillofacial surgeon does. Mm -hmm. In cases of trauma especially, I think you people are involved a lot uh, after road traffic accidents, um, interpersonal violence, yes. and when you get cuts on your face and everything, you know, I have seen a lot of the times in the emergency room you will encounter a maxillofacial surgeon. Yes. So on, on this discussion, guys, we're just trying to explain to you the importance of an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. These are people who are available in, in Kenya, and we have so many of them and they can give you the best quality of care with regards to head and neck lesions and conditions and that's what we are trying to you know um, get out there so lastly on today's discussion doc maybe you can enlighten us what do you feel can be done better in the healthcare you know sector in Kenya to improve maxillofacial surgery access or you know quality of care what do you feel can be done from okay. your side Ah, that's a very interesting question. So mm. it's two prong. One, mm. you'd have to train. So you have to train. So you have to get the people interested to train to be maxillofacial So you have scientists. to get more guys. You have to get, because 50 is still small for a population of 53 million. Yeah. Uh, number two, we also need the policy makers. A lot of them may be non-medical. And okay. they may not appreciate. Mm. So we need to have those conversations so that people appreciate what the maxillofacial surgeon does. Mm. So the dentist or the medical officer, where they come into. And then also create space for them to be able to do their work. Mm. in whichever hospital. And this I'm talking about public hospital. Privates have already adjusted. About Kwanza, Doc, I think I'm going to, to jump into that point. Mm. Um, with these policy makers and you know, people who are running uh, hospital administrators, I think it's important that we acknowledge 
that these specialities of dentistry or medicine are very important because as a general dentist there are things I am not able to do <laughs> that the maxillofacial has been trained on. I mean, doing a master's course and those PhD courses, it's not in vain. So these guys need to recognize that when a dentist they have employed in their facility says that I need the services of a maxillofacial surgeon, then it's good that they are open to that because you people have, you know, you have more to offer. There's, there's something more that you have. So yes, that's a very important point. I, I had to emphasize because I have been in that situation where you have worked in a place and you ask for, you know, someone to come in and assist. So let's, let's guys, let's be aware. <laughs> so what else can we do? Policy makers need to be aware. Yeah. Yes. And also the maxillofacial surgeons themselves need to trump out so this mm. is what we do mm -hmm. and be proud about what they do mm -hmm. and i think we've been doing that as an association so there's an association of oral maxillofacial scientists of oh, kenya yes, we nice. have. <laughs> of, of kenya and also of east africa so there's nice. just a very strong group okay and they've been trying to 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 tell the public right? so maybe mm -hmm. improving on public health awareness remember we're doctors or yes. dentists or mm -hmm. surgeons mm -hmm. Uh, we also need to maybe engage market people who know marketing mm, right? mm. because at the end of the day the surgical specialty people need to know yes. and so there are people who are specialized you know, as a doctor I may not be very well versed in how to improve it's a brand but improve yeah. the knowledge uptake about what we do so I think that is uh, a key factor mm -hmm. we want to want to the people, everybody to know that it's available yes. to the facial surgery mm -hmm. and what we, what we do mm -hmm. where we do it mm -hmm. and then for them as they seek as they seek those ones. In fact, the patients should be demanding to seek some of these special mm. special services because mm. that's where our profession is heading. Yes. Specialized services. If yes. you want something about the foot, you go to somebody who is specialized in the foot. Mm. If you want something for the face, you go to the specialty. Specialty. So the education of also the patient, mm. they have a right to seek a specialty, mm -hmm. a specialist. Whatever yes. They need. yes. Awesome. So that's it, guys. Today we were just, you know, um, putting it out there. This is our specialty. In Kenya, you do it under dentistry. So you start as a general dentist and then you can specialize in some areas of the world. You probably start with medicine and then you can go into maxillofacial surgery. Yeah? You can do it yeah, through dentistry, but you still have to have that dental. You have to do some dentistry. Yeah, you have to do some dentistry. So this is also a career path that some of us may want to consider. As Doc has clearly pointed out, there's a huge gap so if you're interested in it you know it's good to do your research and you can join us in the field <laughs> join dr kamau so thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of my oral health diaries oral and maxillofacial surgeons are available in kenya and it is a service that will serve you very very well for your head and neck issues so guys Let's educate each other. Let us have good healthcare seeking behavior. Thank you so much, Doc, for enlightening us. This month, as Doc has clearly put it, we would like to raise awareness. This is April Oral Cancer Awareness. So he is going to be joining us as we continue with our series on oral cancer awareness. Keep engaging us, keep asking questions. If you would like to get, you know, probably assistance with regards to a maxillofacial surgeon, feel free to leave it in the comment section or you can follow us on Instagram and send a direct message and we will be sure to respond. We'll see you next week on My Oral Health Diaries. Perfect. We are perfect. We didn't even have blips. <laughs> you don't well? Yeah, I just want to see how you look, but I, I was wondering you want where to, to look. You want to you know, see? I was no, looking. we're having a... Sometimes you're looking and then you're like... Eh. I'm looking at the light. I'm looking at the light. I'm looking at the light. Yeah, but it was interesting. Yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh.